Hello, my name is Heather Fleischman. Today we're going to go over my thesis on samurai armor and weapons as functional and wearable art from ancient Japan. How do we define art? Is it defined by being visually appealing? Is it defined by its popularity? Several definitions have been proposed over the years to give us a glimpse into what art is. Haynes gives us a glimpse in his article, Jack Martin's Definition of Art. Haynes argues that Martin's definition of art should be the modern status for art. In the article, he explains that Martin's account offers flexibility with regard to vague objects with which serve both practical and aesthetic purposes today, such as cars and clothes, but simultaneously serve practical functions which include the need for adornment. Adornment, he further explains, is distinguished from beauty valued in itself. Now, according to Fulk, there are a few definitions worth noting that may lend some clarity as to a definable creation. Fulk explains Barry Gott's cluster account of art that explains that Gott's definition includes a specific list to classify it as art. This list is stated as thus. Art is ascribed to objects that, class, that satisfy at least one sufficient subset of a set, or cluster, of criteria. Properties commonly ascribed to his art, such as possessing positive aesthetic properties, being creative and original, and being intended as art. Using this basis, Folk, Ar Folk argues that an object is art in a given context if some person culturally competent in this context have afforded it the status of a candidate for appreciation for reasons considered good in this context. This definition, while seemingly complex, is brought down to the point where if someone considers it art, then it is art. Under the, these descriptions of art, it is no stretch to say that armor and weaponry of the samurai era were unique forms of wearable and functional art. But what about them makes it unique and artistic? Armor at the time was created out of woven patterns, each one made through the preference of the person it was created for. The detail put into each of these weaves shows a care and dedication to the creation of the armor itself. What makes it more intriguing than the idea that each piece was created for the owner as a way to stand out in battle and show their personal tastes. Shown here are the men that served and wore their functional art as protection and recognition. Akita Hiroshi's addition to Art of the Samurai Japanese Arms and Armor from 1156 to 1868 is a section called Japanese Armor. This is available from the Metropolitan Museum of Arts collection on the samurai armor of the time. In an overview, he writes, Japanese armor, among the most colorful in the world, possesses a refined beauty that is enhanced by its combination of sophisticated techniques and rarefied materials, which range from wrought iron, leather, liqueur, and silk, to noniferous, nonferrous and precious metals and dyed textiles. Hande Tarakatsu, immortalized in the 17th century hanging scroll, is shown wearing his favorite black laced Dumaro Fusoko armor. Hande Tarakatsu was one of the Shi Tenno, or the Four Trusted Retainers, otherwise known as the Four Kings of Buddhism. This child's armor was made for Hande Tarakatsu. Honda Tadadaka, the seventh generation in the lineage established by Tadakatsu. Myochin Yoshiguro inscribed his name in, to his work on this helmet, Buddhist Guardian Deity Armor. This was made as a prototype Kaga Gusoko and is named due to the reflection of the unique taste of the lord of the Kaga Meda domain.
Lee Nautaka was a second generation Lord of the Domain. This set is renowned and known as the Red Equipment of Lee. Now the same can be said for the weaponry of the time. Shown here are the examples of archery tips and sword hilts. Each one is created different to show the style of the owner. Crafting was a skill set. Master swordsmith Gassan and his son Sadanobo of the Sadatoshi family are seen here on the left forging a blade. Fujishiro Okisato polishes the finalized blade. Images are courtesy of the Art of Samurai Japanese Arm and Armor Collections from the Metropolitan Museum. Tempering the weapons had an artistic talent all its own. Shown here by the Metropolitan Museum's catalog on the Art of the Samurai, we can see that there are several different patterns used when tempering the weapons. These patterns were distinguished marks of the creators. Were the wearers the artists or the craftsmen? Those that wore and carried each pieces received recognition for the individuality. They wore the pieces and were known by them by many. But behind the scenes, the craftsmen were the true artists. During the samurai period, the Miura family were known for pounding steel into samurai swords. Now the family creates custom golf clubs with the same precision and care they have for everything they do. Mr. Ola as well, a man who used the clubs and won, said the Japanese people regard their work as if it were pieces of art. That is what really stood out. He paid attention to the detail. It is with the same care and detail that pieces like this have carved their own way into the history of functional and wearable art. I would like to thank you all for taking the time to be a part of my presentation today. As a last piece here, I would like to show that this is a helmet that was created with multiple swords on top of it. And this is also available through Arms and Armor of the Samurai, the history of weaponry in ancient Japan.